Hey, Warriors, welcome to episode 13 of the Legacy Warrior Podcast. As always, I am here with my partner in crime, Stephanie McKinley. Hey, everybody. Yeah, today we're going to get right into this. We are about to talk um, about a topic that somebody, a listener, told us about, and that is comparison, how it can be either the biggest thief of joy or your biggest motivator. And look, guys, let's just be real for a second. We all compare. I compare, Stephanie compares, Mm -hmm. society compares, you compare, we know we all do it. We're going to talk about on this episode what that does, what that does for us, either in a negative context or a positive content. But I also want to talk about the self-awareness specifically around comparison and catching yourself because as human beings, we're almost programmed to compare for a variety of reasons, but we know the inner turmoil and the angst that comparing ourselves to others can really put us in. And so I find for me, I will catch myself in the moments when I'm comparing that was feelings that I'm generating inside myself unintentionally because I'm doing it. And then because of the self-awareness I have being able to just take a breath, move myself forward and get out of this negative tornado of emotion that we can all be in sometimes when we're in that comparison mode. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I, just this week, I found myself doing it and I catch myself often doing it. It's hard not to get in that place because we're constantly surrounded by so much that we're, we're constantly looking at and comparing because it's in our face all the time, especially with social media and even the news and, you know, our neighbors, our friends, our family, you know, you just can't help but compare. It's just part of life, I think. I mean, it's really hard to not do it, but there are ways that we're going to talk about that you can get yourself out of that place and be more in gratitude and really focus on your own journey. And and that's what I've found is a big, the big way that I have taught myself to get out of that space is teaching myself that it's about my journey and focusing on my journey and stop comparing it to everybody else. Yeah. It's so crazy. It, you know, even it's in its most simplest forms, uh, Steph, you were talking to somebody about this not too long ago and you were just, I think it was right before you got your hair done and you have naturally curly wavy hair <laughs> and you're getting your hair straightened. Yeah. Not and- just curly wavy. My hair is like a complete frizz. I'm not kidding. Like, that's what I don't like about my natural hair is it's so frizzy. It's like, if it wasn't frizzy, I'd be fine, but it is. So, (laughs) well, it's wild because you, and I can't remember who else you were talking to in the moment, but maybe it was Monica, maybe it was our daughter where you said, you know, if you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you have straight hair, you, you want curly hair. We always want something that we don't have. Right. So if you're on YouTube, you can see me, but if you're not, I, if you look at me right now, my hair is straight and blonde and cut short. Well, my real hair that I grew up with and always had was very dark brown, curly, frizzy, and long. Mm-hmm. Hey, and, and what happened? <laughs> what you were like, complete opposite. what did you tell me? You were eighth or ninth grade and you had wavy hair, but curly hair was in then. And so you went and got a perm. Oh yeah. In the eighties, everybody it, knows it, that the big <laughs> hair was in. So back then it was like, oh, everybody loved my hair. And With they, the bangs and the <laughs> curls and you got a perm and your wavy hair went to tight spiral curls and it literally stayed like that for the rest of your life. <laughs> Unless you put a thousand degree flat iron on your hair and you straighten it. And for a long time I went with it. I just, I found products that made it look less frizzy and I would diffuse it with the hair dryer and I would do these things to make it look as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, smooth as I could with it being curly. And, but I mean, if I'm in humidity, forget it. I, it looks like I have a lion's mane. That's what I feel like. <laughs> It really doesn't. It really doesn't look as bad as she thinks that it does, but it isn't the the difference between being in Florida in the summer and being in Arizona in the summer <laughs> makes a huge difference in how long it takes Stephanie to get ready. Yeah. And let me tell you, we've lived in Florida and now we live in Arizona. And you know what? That's what I love about Arizona is there's no humidity here. Well, a little bit in the summer, but most of the time there's no humidity. And I love it because then my hair doesn't get huge and frizzy. So. <laughs> You know, what's crazy, though, is, you know, we're being funny about the hair thing. 
but I've seen this huge trend happening with people even in our own friend group, but just in society over the course of the last decade, especially, and seems more accelerated over the last five years, social media has caused people to compare on a different kind of level than when we were kids. Cause you might've saw TV and ads and I'm, and I, I'm speaking just in the physical sense right now. Right. Back then it was more TV and magazines. Right. And magazines. And we know they're all airbrushed and Tyra Banks was huge um, on coming out and just saying, Hey, this is what I really look like, but they airbrush it. They put makeup on to make me look different, but I'm seeing so many women, especially not embrace who they are individually they're comparing themselves to what they see, to what society tells them is attractive. And they're getting all of this uh, cosmetic surgery. They're getting the lip fillers. They're getting the Botox. They're getting, um, you know, some body work done potentially sometimes. And it's really wild to me because, it, and men do this too, right? I'm 46 years old. If I'm looking at a 25-year-old dude that has a six-pack and is shredded, who am I to think that at 46, I'm going to be able to look like that, like I did at 25 years old, and it's going to be as easy for me to do it. And then you compare, and when you're comparing, man, you just, there's these negative emotions that come up most of the time. You get jealous, mm. you get envious, um, you, you really it build. It affects your self-confidence. Yeah. You feel bad about yourself. You build on that insecurity, right, Steph? Mm. You build on the insecurity. You feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you're falling behind. And. All it does is cause inner turmoil and keep you from living a life of true peace and happiness because you're comparing yourself to somebody else. And it's not fair to you to do that because everybody's biology and mm -hmm. physiology is different. We're all made differently. Yeah, I was actually just telling Walt about this because uh, as women, it's really hard. Like, um, And I'm not saying men don't go through it too, but women are so judged on their physical looks. And so that's why women, I mean, the beauty industry is huge mm -hmm. because, and those, all that stuff, the, the cosmetic surgery, the, anything that has to do with makeup, hair, all that stuff is huge industry because yeah. for women, it is all about your beauty. I mean, we are completely judged on that. And so we're like doing crazy things to ourselves to compete, to, look our best all the time. And to the point that we can't even feel comfortable going around without makeup because we fear of judgment and, mm -hmm. and just like, and it's not just judgment. Like it's also judgment. Like, Oh, you don't even take care of yourself or oh, like, there's all these things that we feel these pressures of. And at the end of the day, it does just make us feel bad about ourselves and we're not celebrating who yeah. we are and what's great about us. We're focusing on everything that's wrong with us instead of being like, I have these gifts. It doesn't even matter what you look like. I was telling him it's so ridiculous because we do all this to change how we look and we were born to look a certain way mm -hmm. and we need to just accept that that's who we we're supposed to be, you know? Yeah. And I told him like, I've got, I've been in that realm of like comparing myself to and wanting to be as thin as these models I see. And other friends I see. And, mm -hmm. and I have to realize that I don't have that body type. I'm never going to look like some of them because I'm just not built like that. Mm -hmm. And now I can get to a certain level of in shapeness for me and my body. Right. And that's what I have to focus on is what's a good size for me. Yeah. What's the best you for you? Right. Where do I feel healthy? Where do I feel strong? Where do you know, and that's different for everybody. We're all meant to be different. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to be the same. And yet we all try to fit a mold that we see from society because like whatever, like it used to be these fashion models that we saw in magazines and they were way thin and we thought yeah. we were supposed to look like that. So we're all trying to look like that. But meanwhile, even that model, it's probably not even natural for her. She's probably starving herself to look like that. So we're comparing to something that's not even realistic. Well, and you know what? You, everybody's comparing themselves to the model in that instance, right? But then the models will come out and do interviews about how miserable they are mm -hmm. and how unhappy they are with certain aspects of it. And I, and I see this with people. You've got one person who's like an average build, one person who's uh, maybe on the very thin side. Well, 
body dysmorphia is a real thing. So you've got the person who's an average build feeling like they're not good enough and they need to be smaller because that's what's celebrated on social media. And then you've also got the person who's really thin who wishes that they can gain weight. They want to be an average build. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be so skinny because somebody's saying something about them being skinny. Right. And they, I'm glad you said that because there are uh, there's people I know, I had friends that they've said like mm-hmm. they got picked on for being too thin. And they got told they were anorexic and all these other, and they were still getting judged, even though that was the ideal half yeah. of us are trying to look like they're getting picked on for looking like but that. Do, so, do, do you know who that makes me think of? So I love the, the dichotomy of this is you've got Lizzo um, who just embraces who she is fully. Right. And, but we don't know what she thinks when she's behind closed doors, but I love that she just embraces it and we're celebrating more of a voluptuous look, but think about Adele. Adele was, had more of a voluptuous look for a long time. People talked about her, right? Mm -hmm. So then she's comparing and she's thinking, okay, well, maybe I need to lose some weight. Now, if she did it just for her personal health, which is, I think what she talked about in an interview, then awesome. But as she lost weight, people started talking about how skinny she was. And the reality is you're never going to, you're never going to please it. You're never going to please everybody. (laughs) You've got to really work us on focus on pleasing yourself. And I see men go through this men compare all the time. If you go into a group full of men, men are telling them, hey, bro, what do you do? Hey, what kind of car do you drive? Hey, what kind of golf game do you have? Hey, what kind of girlfriend, wife do you have? comparing success or what they perceive Mm -hmm. as, I should say perceive as success, not Mm -hmm. necessarily that success, but it's more about, yeah, um, what you can accomplish or buy kind of thing. And and it's crazy because we create these unrealistic expectations And, you know, you go back to our expectations episode. We talked a lot about this. Expectations will crush your soul. It will keep you living at a fraction of who you are and it will steal and rob your happiness, just like comparison will. So we compare. When we compare, we create expectations based upon success, the visual, the whatever it is, the marriage somebody has that we don't have, the -hmm. job somebody has that we don't have, the promotion somebody got that we didn't get, (laughs) the kids somebody, the success of somebody's kids versus the success of our own. And we just rob ourselves of joy. We create this unrealistic expectations where we're always like looking forward to the future. And if we're always looking forward to the future, we can never be present and truly have gratitude for what we have because we're focused on the things that we don't. It's wild to me. You know, I just want to go back for a second because you mentioned Tyra Banks. And this is crazy because Tyra Banks, like you said, was one of the, I loved that she came on and t- talked about how the, even the models don't look like that. Like she showed, she had cellulite just like mm-hmm. the rest of us. They just airbrushed it. And, you know, and Oprah talked about how, Cause she started doing her magazine and she goes, you don't know all the stuff that goes into making yeah. us look like this. And yeah. she showed herself a before and after and like how she was just like us, like no makeup, mm-hmm. her hair is not done. They do all this work to her to give her this beautiful looking hair and they put all this makeup on and they give her these beautiful clothes to wear. And she's like all of these things. And, the, and then they can airbrush the photos and she's mm-hmm. like, none of this is realistic. <laughs> Nobody looks like this. And I love that she showed up. And then I love that Tyra talked about it because we ended up, Actually, Walt and our daughter ran into Tyra Banks. Yeah, shout out Tyra local, Banks. She was cool. At a local little fast food place here in Phoenix. and Called Smash Burger. She was going to eat a cheeseburger and some French fries. Yeah, I was like, you're who, cool. Who thinks you're going to run into Tyra Banks at Smash Burger? I mean, <laughs> come on. This, it, it sounds crazy. We have pictures of her. She took a selfie with our daughter. And funny because Walt actually recognized her. Our daughter didn't know who she was because she was really from our time period, right? She's from our generation. So, but she was doing America's Next Top Model and things like that. She was still present, just not in the same way that she was. She was supermodel when in our age. Right. So he saw her and he's like, I think that's her because she pulled up in like a big black SUV Mm -hmm. and she had someone kind of walking with her. She had her assistant with her. And so I think that's what tipped him off. And then looking at her, he's kind of like, I think that's Tyra. And then he asked, didn't you approach her? Oh, well, she was sitting at the table caddy corner. And I was like, Tyra Banks. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, my God, you recognize me. Now, Tyra Banks didn't have any makeup on. Yes. She had just jeans and a normal shirt on. She had acne. And this is what's crazy. She, yeah. she, she's in town to promote her makeup line. She has acne on her face. 
Yeah, well, I, it was crazy. I, and and I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm a dude, so she's like, I can't believe you recognize me. And she was the coolest, though. This is what was really cool. Is she, embr- she really was living, embracing who she was and not trying to, like, show up as what the world wanted to see Tyra Banks do or comparing herself to somebody else. And so I asked her before we left, hey, do you mind taking a picture with my daughter? And she was so gracious. She took a picture, told my daughter how beautiful she was. And yeah, I just thought it was really and neat. That's what I thought was awesome was she was there. She had no makeup on. You could mm-hmm. see that her skin was not perfect and dressed normal. Mm-hmm. And she was telling our daughter how beautiful she was. And it was just so awesome to see like the true that, that she could be that true example yeah. of and say that. And she took a picture with her daughter and Later, Monica looked her up, and so she got to see that, oh, she was a supermodel. She was all over TV. Mm-hmm. She does all these things, mm-hmm. and she didn't look the same in those pictures. And either. she was humble and kind. And, and yeah. here, here's the thing. like When you're comparing yourself, and you've got this iceberg mentality around you, and you're looking at the tip of the iceberg and the success somebody has, or what you feel like mentally and emotionally is successful, you're looking for men especially, the cars and the houses and the, the girls or the wife or whatever, and you're looking at this and you're comparing yourself to that. What you didn't see is all the hard work that they did to get there. What you didn't see is mm-hmm. the sleepless nights, the self-doubt that they had to overcome, the, the fear they had to embrace of the unknown and do it scared anyway. You didn't see all these things. What you don't see is how they still have self-doubt. What you don't see is maybe you look that they drive the Lamborghini and you're like, oh, wow, I wish I had one of those. They must be really lucky. But you don't see their marriages in shambles because all they do is work. We're so busy comparing with this iceberg mentality that all it does is drive contempt and it makes us haters. Mm. And, and when you're a, look, I, I've done it. I've been a hater before. <laughs> when you're a hater, you can't live in gratitude. When you're a hater, you can't live present. When you're a hater... All you do is distract from your own goals and the energy that you put out boomerangs back to you and you end up having even less success and living in more quiet desperation and more inner turmoil and having more self-doubt and having more insecurities and feeling more like you're falling behind because you're so busy comparing yourself and hating on others. It's wild that as human beings, we do this and we all freaking do it. We were doing Mm -hmm. it with our podcast the other day. We've got over, you know, we're, we're crushing it in respect to just starting top 10% podcast already doing so well. And here we are thinking, gosh, man, these other people like they're in the top 3%. They're the top 1%. What do we need to do next? And then you hear them on their podcast and they talk about, they've been doing this for 10 years and we've been doing it for two and a half, three months now. (laughs) And we expect unrealistically to be where they're at because we're comparing ourselves to where they're at, not looking at their entire journey and finding inspiration from it. Well, this is where I, this is where the expectations come in that we talked about. And this is where, and, and the comparison, because we do, we get unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. because we see this, what perceived success and think that we should be there when we didn't go through the journey to get there. And that's where, you know, so I'm going to use Walt as an example real quick because oh, what no, most no, what she's about to say right now don't know <laughs> is that so if you look at Walt today, right, and he's this amazing speaker and he's getting them on stages and motivating people and he, the way he talks on here. And if you're just around him, you know, he speaks very well. Well, what you don't know is, you know, we came across court documents when he was little mm. and on the court documents at. I think it was three years old, 18 months or three years old, somewhere in there. It was three. The caseworker wrote in the report that his speech was garbled and unintelligible. Mm -hmm. So he was behind developmentally. And then at 15, when he got out of the abusive situation he was in and went with his aunt, he stuttered bad. Terribly. Yeah. He stuttered. He didn't speak well. Mm -hmm. He didn't have confidence at all. Um, I mean, he was a shell of a human being. And now fast forward to today and you see this powerful speaker. And wow, like what? And I often think of him and that 
Mm. When I think of like, when I start comparing and thinking like, oh, this person like, oh, must be nice that they have that yeah. gift or, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, they're so lucky, like, oh, they got blessed into this wealthy family and they just got given that. Or yeah. I start thinking about those things because we tend to assume and judge that way where we think, oh, must be nice or they're mm -hmm. so lucky, but we don't even know the person's journey it took to get there. And yeah. it's just, and that's something I really have to tell myself a lot of times I have to stop and go like, well, I don't even know that person's story. I can't judge them. I don't know what they went through. I don't know how they got there. And I can't expect my journey to be the same either because I'm not the same person. You know, I, I can't expect to be, it's like doing this podcast. I can't expect to speak at the same level he does because I didn't do all the things he did to get where he's at. I didn't, I didn't work in the military. I didn't speak in front of an admiral. I didn't work mm -hmm. in corporate America and speak to my, you know, employees. And I didn't do any of those things. So I can't expect to speak like he does. And that's where the comparison and expectations kind of work together is right. we get these expectations from comparing and, they're not realistic. Well, and you know, what's cool is thank goodness that you don't do it like I do. Right. Right. Like you have your own way of speaking. That's extraordinarily powerful. And, and it's, it's funny when we did clubhouse, but probably a year and a half ago. So I hosted a trauma to triumph room on this app called clubhouse, just trying to breathe inspiration into the world. And Stephanie wanted to get on there and talk. And she was terrified of getting out. Like she almost wanted to throw up right before she went on there and spoke. And I said, you just got to take the message. Just do it. Mm. You just don't even say one, two, three, just unmute your mic and go and just speak from your heart. We get so caught up in trying to sound like somebody else mm. that we don't allow ourselves to really be fully who we are. And right, you like guys even we told hear how someone speaks and we're like, man, I want to speak I like, like that. Them. Right. Yeah. Cause you even did that. I, I was going to say, yeah, he was even doing that. I like, I already thought he was an amazing speaker. He's getting on there and going, man, like he heard someone else and was like, mm -hmm. man, but do I sound like that? I want to sound like that. And it's like, and I, and I had to tell Walt, like, no, you don't sound like them, but you have your own power. Like right. you there's just talk like you just be yourself because people respond mm -hmm. to you because you're you. <laughs> well, well, and so when people look, cause I've had people tell me this, uh, how did you become such a great speaker? How did, how do you really stand up and deliver the way that you do with so much passion and conviction? But it's my experiences that allow me to do that. And that's where the iceberg mentality so many people miss. Everybody's unique experiences places them with skills, places them with capability, um, places them with the ability to reach people in the way they were meant to reach them. Or the ability to, I can't, I can't build Excel spreadsheets like some of these people who are geniuses. They can build entire programs. Mm. It's just not the way my brain works. And my experiences don't lend themselves to that. My experiences lend themselves to speaking. For 20 years in the military, I worked in intelligence. We stood up in front of senior decision makers in the military and delivered talks about what we're doing, how we're doing it. In corporate America as an executive. I stood up in front of senior leaders or I'd stand up in front of my teams and deliver training. All that prepared me to go be a speaker. So if somebody's comparing themselves to me and they're not doing it from a motivational perspective, which we're about to get into. Mm -hmm. They're doing it from a steal your joy, envy, insecurity. Then they feel like they're not good enough. They feel like they're not powerful enough. They feel like their voice doesn't carry enough. Just think about when you and times where you tried to be like someone else does it come across as genuine does it seem you know are you going to come across like the person you're trying to imitate no because it's not you it's not your mm -hmm. gift you weren't mm -hmm. meant to be the same as them you have your own special gifts and you got to embrace those <laughs> the only competition is you being one percent better than you were the previous day stop mm -hmm. trying to be where somebody else is at because you haven't lived their experiences. And you know what's cool is they haven't lived yours either. So step into your power, your purpose, and your potential based upon what your capability is and what your lived experiences are. And instead, like you just said, you're trying to imitate somebody. Instead of imitating somebody, 
Let their success inspire you. Emulate them. There's a really big difference between imitate and emulate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's like the perfect words to describe the difference between using comparison to in a negative or positive way. Mm -hmm. You just said it. You either imitate or you emulate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what I found that works really well for me, it's just a subtle mind. Well, it's a pretty profound mindset shift. I shouldn't say subtle. It's a profound mind sh shift mm -hmm. change. I swear, sometimes these braces that I have on my bottom teeth um, give me a lisp or something. So <laughs> it's like my braces are sticking to my the inside of my mouth. So if you guys hear me stuttering over my words sometimes, that's typically what it is. Um, and you know what's cool is is letting somebody's success inspire you. So I look at people who've been in the inspirational speaking space and the way that they can reach people at a soul level. And because they can reach people at a soul level, they really help that person change. And when I came into this speaking space, whether I do it in corporate America or military um, events or um, survivor events or whatever it is, I wanted, I felt inspired by them, but I didn't want to imitate them because I feel like the thing that's missing sometimes um, isn't the ability to inspire or motivate somebody, but those feelings are fleeting. It is really, the ability to give somebody the belief that they can accomplish what you have. You see, nobody in this world is an anomaly or special in respect that you can't emulate what they're doing. The only thing that really separates me from anybody else or somebody else from me is that they've made some choices and maybe they've done more consistent direct action for that goal that I have in front of me right now than I have. But if I focus on where they're at and not where I'm going, I'm going to end up stuck and the insecurities just going to breed self-doubt and the self-doubt is going to just keep me in the same place that I've always been. But if I emulate what they're doing, the success, and I learn from the success that they have, and then I just try to be 1% better every single day, I'm going to keep taking steps forward. And one day people are going to look at me and say, I could be just like Walt too. I'm going to start taking steps forward also. Yeah, I like, well, I was going to say the people that I tend to want to emulate, I've realized the people I like, I really admire and want to, I want to be like them are the people that are really true to themselves. And I see them as authentic and that they're mm -hmm. really being who they really are. That's what I emulate. I don't want to be like someone that's pretending that they yeah. have something that they don't really don't. That Ooh, keep up it, with the Joneses. Yes. Talk about pretending stuff. And honestly, that actually kind of infuriates me. Is I hate seeing people that are pretending they're doing well and they're really not. And it makes me think back on this. It makes um, me sad for them. Mm -hmm. But I think back on um, when the housing market was booming mm -hmm. and everybody was buying bigger and bigger homes and then when the market crashed and then there was these shows about people that had bought these homes they really couldn't afford and they were having to walk away from them they were having to foreclose mm. on their homes and live in all this debt and because they were faking or trying to be someone they were not and the problem with that is there's a reason you, if there's something that you're reaching for, or you're striving for, or you're wanting so bad and you don't have it, there's a reason you don't have it. It's because you haven't gone through the journey or the process mm. to learn how to get it. And so you don't deserve to have it yet if you didn't do those things to earn it. So there's a, you know, I, I just keep seeing this and it's like, there's a reason for why we're doing what we're doing. Like in the work, when I say like, we're in this, like, we're meant to be in this, um, this spot at this moment. It really is true because you're there because it's part of your journey. There's something there yes. that you're supposed to be learning before you can move to the next step. Because if you're not getting the lesson, you can't move forward. And so, cause you can't, and, and with all of that, you, you learn that you learn appreciation in the process. You learn thing, how to do things. So you don't, keep making the same mistake. And there's so much that you learn in a process and journey that, you know, 
it's just not deserved if you didn't do those things to get there. Well, it's like, man, people just aren't living congruently. Whether you're keeping up with the Joneses and you're trying to buy all the things. Meanwhile, you have somebody looking to you mm. and they're thinking, man, I would give my left arm to give all the things. That I've, I've seen this with people. I would give my left arm to, to, to have what those people have. But what you don't see behind closed doors, behind the boats and the homes and all the stuff that they're portraying that is perfect in their life. Someone living in a lot you're of seeing, debt. <laughs> you're seeing them drowning in debt. You're yeah. seeing them frustrated. You're seeing them angry. You're seeing the marriage deteriorate because they're working their tail off trying to show other people who ultimately don't even really care about you that you have everything. And it's crazy for me to think that we're comparing ourselves to people not even knowing. So if you have everything in your home, I used to think this. I grew up so poor. No kidding. When I moved in with my aunt, we lived in a single wide tray, two bedroom trailer. Mm. It was, I shared a bed with my cousin who was like three. There was two bedrooms. Our, we had to turn our car off. <laughs> no joke. Our little Toyota Celica, yellow Toyota Celica. We had to turn our car off in a drive through because it would gas us out. It would literally smoke us out. Talk about, thank God they didn't have some smog inspections <laughs> back then. Cause we would have failed that over and over again, but that's all we had. So I used to look at a family in my hometown who owned a car dealership and those teenage boys got to drive brand new Ford pickups. Mm -hmm. And do you know, there was divorce in that family. There was trauma in that family. They, they went on and they, um, you know, they, they struggle with drugs. So here I am comparing the things that they have, not realizing behind closed doors, what might or might not be really what's going mm. on. And we got to get out this cycle where we're just comparing ourselves to other people because it just crushes you. But if you can transfer your mind to find motivation in comparison, if you could let the success inspire you, like we talked about, if you can learn from them, what's working. But really like making sure you're following the people that are authentic and congruent. You learn from them what's working. Maybe they started a podcast and that led to more speaking engagements, which led to them, um, you know, being this huge coach or which, you know, which led to them being having the house of their dreams, which led to them having. All, but how did they do it? Because Tony Robbins says this a lot. Success leaves clues. Mm. Success leaves clues on the things that you can go do that meet your goals and your value system. Don't imitate them, emulate them, understand how they've gotten to where they're going and where they're about to go next. Be 1% better every single day and make it about your goals and your dreams and your values and where you want to head. Because I can guarantee you the person you're comparing yourself to, those things don't all match up. Some of them may, but all of them won't. Well, that's why I want to go back to like the, <clears throat> when we, we tend to equate success with all of the things like seeing people, we equate like wealth is like, oh, if you have the big home and the big, and all the cars and the toys mm -hmm. and the, and we automatically equate that as successful, but you need to take a step back and like, look a little deeper and see like, but is that a happy family? Mm -hmm. Do they have a good marriage? Are their kids doing well? Because all those things are indicators of more of real success mm -hmm. is do they live a happy life? Are they actually happy internally? And how are you going to know that unless you yeah. can actually meet those people or really talk to them and know their story? Because there's a lot of people with all the things that are not happy at all. But, oh. There's some of the most miserable people out there. For, okay. So. This, look, let's talk about this part right here, because this part drives me bananas. There's literally companies. So we're people follow influencers on social media all the time and they think, oh, look at look at these cool red carpet events. Look at them flying on a private jet. Look at them doing all of these things. But meanwhile, these same people will go literally work with a company who will rent the private jet to you for you to go <laughs> take pictures on. While it's on the ground, it don't even, they ain't going nowhere in it. They're literally taking pictures to perception manage you into believing 
they have all the things that they're saying. There's so much fake out there. It's unbelievable. Oh, this me. is the problem with social media. You got coaches in this industry I'm in that are coaching people and they're not even living congruent in their own life with the thing that they're taking money for to coach somebody on. And this is what kills me is we're comparing ourselves to something that's not even a reality. And that's what I'm talking about. Like we're, comp we keep looking at, oh, this amazing thing, like, like the magazine cover or the, he said the jet on social media. And we're thinking like, man, how do I get that? And meanwhile, that's not even real. It's not realistic. <laughs> it's not real. And we're comparing ourselves to something that's not even real. You got, you have PR. I, I know because I've been approached by them. You have PR companies that will literally put you on Forbes magazine. Their little <laughs> emblems on the bottom right hand corner, but it isn't even really Forbes magazine. Yeah. Right. So I could have all these Forbes covers and USA Today and top, you know, top 10 speakers to look out for in 2023 because I paid $15,000 to get it. Oh, yeah. But it's not even real. And people paying for likes. Like and we're, we're comparing ourselves. <laughs> I'm getting pissed off now. We're comparing ourselves to the shit that's not even real, to what people are purchasing to gain influence. And you're following them and you're comparing yourself to them and you're wishing you could be like them instead of standing in your own power, living in the present, having some damn gratitude for what you actually have. And then becoming the person you're meant to be, which is not the person that they are. It's like I said, like, um, so the magazine, like Tyra Banks was an example or looking at your neighbor. So your neighbor has this big brand new SUV and they've got a boat <laughs> and they've got a side-by-side, -side, you know, off-road vehicle and, and they've got all these things. And you're thinking like, dang, how are they doing that? How are they getting that stuff? You all, you don't know that all of that was borrowed. It's all debt mm -hmm. and they're drowning in debt, but you're thinking like they're successful because they have that, but they're not because they don't, can't actually afford it. They just, it's all debt. Well, but, and then they're miserable. They can't even go use the stuff you wish you had yeah, because cause they got to work so yeah. damn hard to pay for the debt of the things that they're not even using. And they're suffering in quiet desperation the whole time. And you guys, this is way more prevalent than you even think. I mean, and then I think about, we watched that, um, the documentary, or I don't know if you call it a documentary, but the show on Pamela Anderson. Yeah. And man, I had some realizations during watching that, that her right everyone was comparing themselves to her, trying to look like her mm -hmm. or wanting to look like her and meanwhile she talked and they showed pictures of her younger and she was beautiful by the way she was very beautiful already like she didn't had at that point hadn't had any work done to herself she had a beautiful face yeah. she was already pretty well she shows up you know she ends up in the playboy mansion and she's comparing herself to all the women that were there and mm -hmm. they were all telling mm -hmm. her they all had surgery so what did she do? She went and got a bunch of surgery done. Well, meanwhile, the ladies who had surgeries were comparing themselves to Pamela Anderson, who didn't have surgery. <laughs> like everybody's comparing everybody in that moment. Yeah. So she did all these things to change herself. And she, so what we were looking at was not the real representation of mm -hmm. her. It, she had a bunch of work done that she altered how she looked. And, you know, and a lot of this, like their hair is not even real. They're, you have all this makeup on or they've had surgery done or, yeah. you know, and it's just. And, and here you ladies are feeling like you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not attractive enough. Nobody's going to really want to be in a relationship with you because you don't look like that because you're so busy comparing. But, you know, life has a funny way of bringing the right people into your life. Mm. Life has a funny way of matching you up with the person that is perfect for you. But you don't get to meet that person, man or woman. You don't get to meet that person if you're not authentically yourself. You, when you're acting like somebody else and you're comparing, you end up meeting somebody who really isn't your soulmate. But when you can be authentic mm -hmm. and congruent and just embrace who you are, your weird, quirky, amazing, mm -hmm. beautiful self, you're going to find the person that's meant for you because you love yourself enough to be who you are in every single moment. Well, also, so let's say you, 
you know, we've seen movies on this and stuff where say you pretend to be something you're not to attract this person that you like. Mm -hmm. But then once you actually get in the relationship with them, they're going to find out at some point who you really are. Mm -hmm. And then they may not like you anymore because they thought you were someone else that you're not. So where does that get you? I mean, there's no, there's no good to come from that. Like you might as well just be yourself because, and why do you, and that's the other thing. Why would you want friends that didn't like you for who you are? They only liked you because they thought you were something else. Yeah. So what, I mean, I mean, you got to be in a circle of people that celebrate each other's differences. We don't want a bunch of Stepford wives. I think was a move where everybody was literally the Mm. exact same. We don't, we shouldn't want to be around that. You celebrate right. people, find mentors that inspire you, that you want to emulate. Keep your circle tight with people who celebrate each other's differences and want to see each other win. That don't compare and then get envious and jealous and secretly wish you ill will. Be around the people that celebrate. I'm going to go meet a buddy today for lunch. And he, we love watching each other win. It's so much fun. And the conversations become totally different. When you're in that space, mm. when you're not a hater, when you're not drinking, because man, let me tell you, comparison will make you a hater. You will gulp down some hater raid <laughs> with some, like, like you just got done playing two hours of basketball. I have done it. I have been a hater in my life. And there's no good that's ever coming out of those moments where I've been a hater. And, and, and I think, God, we're so focused on being perfect all the time or what we think is perfection, because when we're comparing, we're looking for something close to perfection. We can't be perfect. We're never going to be perfect. Nobody is. Everybody's got their struggles and their pain and their trials that they're trying to turn into triumph, their pain into purpose. We just need to focus on progress. Again, it's that 1% better every day mentality. Me versus me, not me versus anybody else. Yeah, this is why I'm so big on knowing people's stories and i'm like this has become like a huge mantra for me is like everyone has a story and i've always loved getting to know people like i ask people a lot of questions i really try to get to know them because i feel Mm -hmm. like you can't really know someone unless you kind of know their history or you know what they with their experiences and what shaped them because Mm -hmm. that's what makes them who they are and So you got to get past the surface level stuff and find out who people really are. I love to hear people's stories. I love when people share it. Everyone has a story. You should always want to share your story because you never know who it's going to help. We, we find connection and we relate Mm. to people based on those things. And we want to know who the real person is because it is what shaped you. You know, like I said, Walt was a prime example of, God, if you knew his story, most people never knew his story. People are just finding that out now that have known him for a lot of years. They never knew where he really came from. Mm -hmm. So you learn like, that's why he has this insatiable drive that he has because it's from, it stems from that past and that childhood and you know, the things that he tried to overcome and all that he has overcome makes you look at him totally differently. Like, wow, I just, I didn't know you had it that hard and you went through those kind of struggles, but that's mm-hmm. what shaped him into who he is. Well, but, and my gifts that I received from that traumatic past that I lived, the reason I am the way that I am because of all those experiences isn't your experiences. Right. So what gifts do you have? You're so busy comparing your mm-hmm. gifts to other people's gifts. Stop. What gifts do you have that you need to embrace, that you need to find power from? Who's waiting for you to show them your gifts so that they can find their own? Like, that's what I'm going to say. And that's why Oprah has always been like a huge, to me, she's someone I emulate because she Mm -hmm. was exactly that way. Like she was one of the first people to come out in public and she shared the horrific story of how what she had been through as a child and, and man, so many people related to her and they just were like, finally someone who's being authentically who they are. And she found power in her story, even though it was so horrible. Mm -hmm. And 
She empowered others to come out and share their stories. And God, the movement we saw from that, like so many people came on her show and opened up about their struggles. And then so many more people then were empowered and related to that. And then were like, felt like they could share and be who they really were. And that's the power in it is like when we're being authentic and when we are vulnerable and we share who we really are, that's what allows other people to feel that they can be too. And you're still going to have the haters who are comparing, who think it's easy, who think you're lucky. And that's why, but because really, they didn't get to know who you are. They don't know your story. But that's what I love the, the comparison you make with Oprah there, because, because she was authentic, because she was congruent, because she was unapologetically herself, she opened up space for other people to do the same. That's why she's so revered. Mm -hmm in so many circles. So there's still people that are going to talk that got that gallon full of hater right. rate. And I had so much respect for her. And meanwhile, though, if she had been like most of us are, I have been this way too, where we're so fearful of the judgment. She was like, most people are so fearful of the judgment. If they shared that, Oh, people are going to think of me differently. They're going to treat me differently. And there probably were people who did. And maybe there were people who judged mm -hmm. her for that. But you know what? She didn't care because she was like, I'm going to be me. And I can't be authentically me unless I share this. So. Well, and that's why in episode 11 of our podcast, we talked a whole episode about embracing the fear. Because when you can embrace the fear, you can be authentic. When you can be authentic, you can stop comparing yourself to others. When you can stop comparing yourself to others, you can live in the present. When you can live in the present, you can have gratitude. When you have gratitude, you have mm -hmm. peace and harmony in your life that you will deny yourself of. And so we talked about, hey, here's all the negative things that can happen. We talked about, here's how you can find motivation in it. And as always, we want to leave you with the four keys on how you can start executing differently right now and how you can shift your mindset from a comparison perspective to truly use it as power and rocket fuel in your life. And the first thing I think everybody needs to really understand is run your own race, man. Mm. Like, Focus on your progress. Stop comparing everybody else's comparing everybody else's progress. The reason we did this episode is we had somebody reach out to us who listened to the expectations. And I talked about in there, I would get promoted and I would have this success. And I always felt relief. I never felt um, elated, which is wild for me to even think now because I didn't live in the journey. I didn't have gratitude. I expected this to happen because I expected it to happen because I was willing to put in the work and I was so focused on the goal, not the journey. I missed the beauty of what I went through and the hard work and dedication it took to, to earn these promotions. And this, and I would always be like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Maybe why celebrate the successes along the way? Yeah. Why? Cause I'm comparing the money that I want to have in the bank compared to other people. I'm comparing the house I want to have. I'm comparing, I'm comparing all of these things that I want to get because to me, I felt like that was leaving a legacy when in reality I had already left one. I'd already changed a legacy. You and I have given our children our shoulders to stand on and reach to the next rung in the ladder. And so stop focusing on other people, run your own damn race. Celebrate the achievement, celebrate the accomplishments, accomplishments, celebrate the journey, man. Yeah, I love that you said, and that's what I, I highly encourage all of you out there to do when you start to feel like you're comparing, you start feeling yourself doing that and start going like, oh, why don't I look like mm -hmm. that? Why, why isn't that happened to me? Why this, why that? Tell yourself, run your own race. Run your own race. Mm -hmm. Focus on your own journey. Am I doing better than I was doing yesterday? Have I changed something today that I need to change? Start asking yourself those kind of questions where it's, am I progressing myself on this journey? Am I doing a little bit better than I was? And that's the way that you get yourself out of the comparison game. Because, you know, I, I was talking about this a little bit with Walt about how I know people that, for example, were single and, you know, they're getting up in age in their thirties and forties and they'll have their parents and their friends and stuff. Will and you start. remember, oh, hold on, before you make this point, you remember when we used to be like forties old? Now I'm like, <laughs> you better not call 40 old. <laughs> Perspective. 
Yeah. So you have single people that are getting up their need, right? And they, and they have their parents and their friends and they're like on, keep asking them like, Oh, have you met anyone? Are you dating? You know, and they're putting this pressure on them <clears throat> unnecessarily putting this pressure on them because they think that that's what success is, what, what makes people happy because that's what society has taught us. Mm -hmm. Society has taught us like, this is how it goes. You graduate high school, you go to college, you get a, a good job, you start a family, you get the house, mm -hmm. live happily ever after. That's the, it's like, that's, that's the, the layout. American dream. Yeah. That's the American dream. That's the layout for everybody. That's what everyone's trying to do. Well, it's not really for everybody. We were never meant to all follow the same thing, same path. And we have a tendency to push, push that on everybody. And meanwhile, that single person's over there like, well, what makes you think I'm not happy? Maybe I want, you know, I actually enjoy being mm -hmm. alone. And there are people like that. And you know what? And they, and they're happy because they have their freedom to do what they want when they want. They can travel all over the place. They can yeah. go do things that people with families can do. And so, and that's where we come back to, like he was saying, like, we all have a tendency to compare what we don't have. So you've got single people looking at married people with children and thinking like, oh man, am I ever going to have that? Am I going to have that? They're falling day? behind. They're, they're not keeping up with their friends. And they think that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And there's some, you know, it puts shame on them and all kinds of stuff. And then, but then you got married people with kids over here like, man, I wish I had that freedom. I wish I could go do that when I want. And, you know, I can't just go to a movie when I feel like it. I can't go take this trip when, you know. And like, just, dang, you got to go to Thailand? Man, <laughs> we're, we're just trying to go to the next town over. <laughs> trying to go to lunch. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a night out dinner with my husband without kids. Or go to the grocery store not tagging along kids. Or, you know, you have no idea. There's been so many times where, I mean, I talk about this a lot because um, I went through a really hard time after I had my first kid and just that the change from being single and doing what I wanted to having a child now that I'm responsible for and ooh, it completely changed my life. And I think I went through like a grieving process of mm -hmm. that freedom. freedom. Yeah. I grieved my freedom and I, it took me a long time to get over that. And, and I mean, and, it, there was still like many times through the years that I still was like, man, sometimes I miss it. But mm -hmm. then I also have to stop and appreciate where I was at with my kids and like, and just the gift that they are and what a reward it is to raise a child and, and see them grow and prosper. And like, there's just, and that's where we're, you know, I just really want to show you the comparison that like everyone thinks that, it's the grass is greener. Mm -hmm. The grass is greener on the other side, right? And then there's that analogy where they say, well, why don't you water your own grass? <laughs> right. And that's exactly what we're talking about. And that's what it comes down to a comparison is stop looking at the other side. Stop thinking the grass is greener. It's not greener. If you water your own, yours will be really green. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you could move to the next house and not water the grass at that house and it's still going to die. <laughs> <laughs> So you got, yeah. you got to learn how to water your own grass. And that's what we're talking about here. And I want to add one more piece to this. When somebody's putting pressure on you to get married, to have kids, when it's not even you, it's like your family doing it. It's not because they don't love you. They're actually doing those mm -hmm. things out of love, but it's based upon what they feel like is success. What they feel like is happiness because mm -hmm. that's what works for them. And this is what's so special about living individual lives. We've also been programmed to think. Is our experiences dictate what brings us happiness. And because our experiences are so diverse, what brings us happiness, joy, and internal freedom is different for everybody. Right. So I think it's just important to understand that that always comes from love from people. Right. But they got married and they had kids and they feel like you should have kids and you should do the same thing, but it's really selfish on their part because that's what worked for them. If you don't want to do that, then don't do it. Right. Don't conform to societal pressures or family pressures because you don't feel like, um, because you may feel like what you're doing is keeping you happy. In this one instance, the person we're talking about, um, in the conversation they were telling us about, they were getting pressure from their family 
on why they weren't with somebody, why they hadn't got married yet, because they're, they're almost 50 years old. And this person turned around and said, well, what makes you think that I'm not happy being single? It's like, wow, no shit. I guess I wouldn't be happy being single, Mm -hmm. but you are. And that's actually awesome. That's awesome. Embrace that. So don't feel like you got to run everybody else's race, run your race. And one thing that really helps me a lot, the second key today is and sometimes really- people put that pressure to you because they they've lived both sides. And so sometimes they may know that, you know, they they know what it can be like if you were married and have kids. And yeah, you might but it's still kids, based but, upon what right. they want and right. what's made them happy, not what's making you happy. There's right. a really big difference, mm-hmm. even if they've lived. And on both this sides is where the experiences shape you. So I think, you know, you got to set your own goals. This is what we're talking about. Run your own race, like focus on your progress. Enjoy the progress you're having. Be in gratitude for that. You got to set your own goals. If you start comparing your goals to somebody else's, then you're not running your own race anymore. Like set your goals, not the goals somebody else wants for you, not the goals you think you should have based upon social media, not the goals that. Um, you know, society tells you that you should have white pick offense, all that stuff. Just set your goals, set your goals yeah. because it's setting your own goals allows you to run your race and that allows you to be congruent and that will give you some of the internal freedom that you're looking for. I encourage you to really sit back and think about what makes you happy mm-hmm. and write it and down. really separate that because we've been shaped by like he said, social media, we've been shaped by our parents. We've been shaped by society, just telling us what we should want. But actually sit back and think about like, what makes you happy? What things do you enjoy doing? Like really think about that because mm-hmm. oftentimes we're, it's still shaped by someone else. And we have to really think about like, when's the last time I really felt joyful? What was I doing in that moment? Like, you know, I, I, I struggled with this for a long time, especially as a mom. I felt like I lost my identity for a long time because I was so focused on my family and their needs mm-hmm. that I lost who I was. And I couldn't even tell you what really made me happy anymore. I was like, mm-hmm. I had to really do some soul like, searching. What personally made you happy? What did you right. like to do? I had to do some real soul searching of like, what do I enjoy? Mm-hmm. You know, because... I didn't do a lot of it for so long. I didn't even know if I did enjoy it anymore. Like I used to love, I used to love playing sports. I used to love basketball. I used to love to dance. I used to love, I mean, I had so many things I used to love to do that I just never did anymore. And so it was like, I don't even know if I do enjoy that anymore. Mm -hmm. I think I've changed and evolved as I've gotten older too. And there's certain things like I can't play sports the same way. So that I can't really do, but there's different things I enjoy doing. Like I do enjoy just getting out in nature and going on hikes and Mm -hmm. walks. Yeah. And I don't know. I just feel grounded when I'm out in nature and I, it, it does bring me a happiness. I don't know if it like brings me back to my childhood or what, but I realized like, I love to travel. I, I just love to see new places and experience new things and try new things. And, you know, and there's certain things I just don't enjoy. So like, Mm -hmm. I don't make myself do things. I don't, you know, like, I really had to have this and I can tell you like right now at this point in my life, I really had to think about this kind of stuff because I'm, I'm finally to the point where my kids are raised and they're leaving the home and I have this freedom again that I didn't have for a long time. And so now I'm like, what do I really want to be doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and Wal and I have both had to have this. Yeah. We're both reaching that. Mm -hmm. It's like, it is like, you know, they say like, um, midlife crisis, <laughs> you know, they used to always call it a midlife crisis. It kind of is. And now I understand it. I never really understood it before, but now I understand it because it is like, you're in a different point in life. You actually look at everything differently from your experiences. Cause you can look back and reflect on your life in a different way. You never could. And you're in a different space yeah. because you have different wisdom you're older there, you know, you, there's physical changes. So there are things you can't do that you used to do. And so you are constantly changing and evolving and you have to adjust to that Mm -hmm. and start finding the new thing, try new things so that you can find what brings you happiness and joy, find new things that, you know, because, you know, I, I'm, I am finding like, I didn't know I would like boom podcasting. 
Mm -hmm. It's actually really fun. It's fun talking to all of you. I would have never thought that. And don't let Steph fool you. If I throw some 90s hip hop on, she'll still love to dance. <laughs> throw some big and Tupac on. Don't play Steph. You still. Her nickname in our friend group is Thug Wife. When uh, we're drinking and, and put some put some tunes on. <laughs> Look, uh, so, okay. So we talked about three of the four keys right now. Focus on your own progress. Run your own race. Set your goals. We mixed in gratitude there. Everything in life, if you have gratitude for your life, you're just going to be happier. And the last thing is just be intentional about when you compare, do it to motivate. Don't let it destroy your confidence. Don't let it breed self-doubt. Don't let it build self-limiting beliefs. Don't let it make you feel like you're not good enough or you're not for, far enough in life as the next person. Really just use it to compare and motivate because like I said, guys, there's we're all human beings. We're all the same. We just have different experiences. You can do anything somebody else has done in the way that your experiences allow you to do it. When I think, look at speakers, when I look at people who are further in this industry than I am, I just get motivated. I'm like, I know I could do what they do. I know I can do what they do. I, they just been doing it longer and more consistent than me, but I'm coming. Well, when you look at it with the right perspective, if you're looking yeah. at it like, well, I can see that they've been doing this a while and that's where they're at from doing it for a while. Then I know I can get to that mm -hmm. place. And when I look at it in that way, then it's a good thing. But yeah. if, if you're looking at it and thinking, oh, I can never get there or, you know, I don't have that gift yeah. or, you know, it, it is really in the perspective of how you're looking at it. I'll give you one really quick example. Joe Rogan, number one podcast in the world, $100 million contract. We found an old video of like one of his first podcasts. He's literally sitting on a grimy green couch <laughs> with his homie. They've got a handheld mic and they're passing it back and forth um, between him and the guest. <laughs> and they didn't have any fancy studio equipment and they didn't have any contracts and they didn't have anything. It was just a person who wanted to use their voice to do more in the world. He now, just took messy if, action. If Joe Rogan would have compared himself to, other people doing it. And Joe Rogan would have thought, mm, I can't do what they're doing. And he would have let the jealousy and envy and self-doubt stop him. He wouldn't be the number one podcaster in the world. And so if you're sitting out there today and you've been allowing comparison to steal your joy, you've been allowing comparison to make you feel not good enough. You've been allowing comparison to just keep creeping that self-doubt in there. You've been allowing comparison to paralyze you. I want you to make this mindset shift today. And the only time I want you to compare yourself to anybody else is when you're finding power and empowerment to know that you can do the same things. The only time I want you to compare yourself to somebody else is when you're looking at their journey to figure out what success clues they've left behind. And I just want you to focus on being 1% better every single day because if you do that in six months in a year in two years in five years the journey that you're on is going to look astronomically different than the journey point that you're starting at today so start using comparison as rocket fuel instead of comparison being the anchor that continues to drown you in your life i think we're going to end it on that note <laughs> so everybody join us next week for our conversation with the renowned international speaker number one best-selling author marcus black he's an awesome individual like i'm so excited for you for you guys to hear him um powerful story so and, and we recorded week. this one yesterday with him because you know we're working a few weeks ahead it was it was dope i'm telling you guys are gonna really really enjoy this one so make sure you tune in Mm -hmm. to that one too and he's someone who i will tell you um we were talking about this emulating and whatever mm -hmm. um he's someone that showed me i can do it. it 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 propelled me and inspired me to want to get out and tell my story mm -hmm. he inspired me so it's gonna be so good, y'all. Yeah. I mean, we we did it already, like I said, so we know it's fire. So I could tell you that with <laughs> the utmost confidence. And so, look, if this, as always, guys, look, if this episode resonated with you, go share it with somebody. Share it on your social media. Text it to somebody that you know really needed this conversation. 
to help propel their life forward or use the tools that we're providing you in this because ultimately we can't do the work for you, but we can give you the tools to help you accelerate your own progress. Um, don't forget to subscribe so, and also subscribe to the Legacy Warrior Podcast on at Legacy Warrior Podcast on Instagram and YouTube. And hey, you know what? Until the next time, stay in the arena of life, keep fighting, keep taking steps forward and leave this world a little bit better than you found it. See you guys next Tuesday.